Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with a new Mr. Ballin video. That's right. This one is titled La, La Masara. I, I get, I reckon? La Masara? I don't know. It's, it's that word. You can't see it. It's okay. It's that word. Trust me. La, Ma La Masara. I suck at that. When you see this mist, run. Run, fool. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's one of Mr. Ballin's podcast. All right. I'm excited again in today's video. If you guys are excited as I am, please go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy cup, something special. Let's get concerned. I'm I'm concerned. Why why are we running for mist? Is this Miss Survival? Mist Survival, is it? I'm good at that game. Today's story is about a group of friends who travel to this supposedly haunted abandoned well, town why would they want to do that up for? in the mountains in Spain, and when they get there, the town totally lives up to the hype. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So, if that's of interest to you, please offer to make the like button a grilled cheese sandwich, but make sure you blast it on super high heat so you just burn the outside of the bread, but don't melt the cheese. Also, please subscribe I to actually our channel like and like turn that. on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. <laughs> I do. I actually really do like my grilled cheese like that. And then you take it and you dip it in, you're like your chili or your tomato soup or anything like that, and it, it melts the cheese for you. And it gives it kind On of a smoky flavor. On the afternoon of October 16th, 1991, a 36-year-old man named Enrique Martinez Enrique. bent down, pulled out his pocket knife, Enrique and carefully cut through the stem of a mushroom that was growing right next to a mossy log. And then after freeing this mushroom, he put it inside of his wicker basket with the other mushrooms he had collected in the area. And then Enrique stood up and just took a minute to take in the unbelievable view of this Ooh. lush green valley right below him. Enrique was out mushroom hunting along with his wife Anna I love and mushroom two hunting. friends Jorge morels and Sophia, are my... who were dating. Mm. And where they were mushroom hunting was near this old some morel mushrooms, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion. Fry that shit up in some fucking butter. <sighs> Put it over top of a anything, a steak, baked potato. <laughs> abandoned town called La Musara, which is located up in the mountains of northeastern Spain. That's pretty. It had been Jorge's idea to come to this area Jorge. and explore. Jorge had heard all these crazy stories about La Musara, about how it was haunted, and there was all this creepy folklore surrounding this town. It looks creepy. As for Enrique, he didn't really care about the lore surrounding this town. Gotcha. Frankly, the town was not that interesting to him. What was interesting was the opportunity to come out here and collect mushrooms. That was something he really liked to do. Enrique okay. and his wife Anna lived in this very busy port city in Spain called Tarragona. And so their lives day to day were very hectic. You know, Enrique, he worked at a bar as a bartender. And so every night he was surrounded by hundreds of people coming in and out. And so having a chance to come out here and be in nature at peace and collect these mushrooms just sounded too good to turn up. Enrique stopped gotcha. staring at the valley right in front of him, and he turned around and continued to scan the mountainside for a particular type of mushroom that grew in this area. It was called the bloody milk cap, which was known to be great for grilling, you know, it paired well with meat. And so Enrique's plan was to go out on this mushroom hunting trip. And when they got back, he wanted to cook a feast using these mushrooms for his wife and his friends. The group slowly made their way okay. uphill until they finally saw the outskirts of the abandoned town, La Musara. La Musara was more than 900 years old, and now it was just a collection of crumbling ruins, Damn. some dating it's... back to prehistoric times. The amazing thing about that is, man, we can make houses nowadays. Don't last worth a fuck. Back in the day, with the most primitive tools possible, these motherfuckers are building whole civilizations that you can still find remnants of. And some places look like they've never been, like, touched. I just think that's crazy. 
I love it. La Musara had never been a big town. At its peak, it had about 300 residents. Sara. But Sara. the last of Sara. the remaining residents Sara. of this town Sara. had finally fled 40 years earlier. And so now it was a ghost town. The group made their Kinda way like over to one of the buildings that was right on the outer perimeter of La Musara. It was basically just a foundation with three walls still standing. There was no roof. But the friends, they went over to this building, and from right next to it, they were able to look straight down the main drag of La Musara. It was basically just a dirt road that went straight out, and all along the road were other kind of ruined foundations of where buildings used to be. And fairly far down this road, maybe 200 feet away from That's where the friends cool were standing, shit. was the... I'm sorry, I just slipped into a complete ADHD, ADD moment, bro. I was watching everything <laughs> through my glasses. I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about no more. I got amazed over the fact that I can see Mr. Ballin right there. I, I'm stupid, okay? Just, shh, just keep it. Just, Center of La Musara, which was marked by this big church with a huge steeple, and the church was actually in decent shape. It had not totally crumbled onto itself like the rest of the buildings around it. And then behind the church, somewhat visible from where the friends were standing, was this overgrown cemetery. And then kind of off to the side of the church was this pond so it is a church. that was also was very right. overgrown. And it was he full that of croaking frogs. Before I guessed... Enrique and his friends just stood there next to their dilapidated building, staring at La Musara in silence. Now, they knew this place was going to be very creepy. You know, people had said it was haunted, and that was a big is reason why Jorge is it haunted? to come here. But now seeing it die. in person, I mean, really, the creep factor was much higher than they expected. It really did look like a spooky place. And then adding to the spook well, factor spooky. was very clearly, as they were looking down this main road, the friends could see this mist kind of starting to envelop the town. Mist Jorge survival! Jorge told the friends when he was doing Save his research Rachel. about La Musara that the mist was really a trademark of this town. That at night, it basically got completely consumed in white mist. But now the friends are looking down this road, it's the middle of the day, and already the mist is starting to come in. And all Finally, they Jorge can see is the silence concrete and said, hey, I want to show you guys something. Sticking he up through the mist. grabbed his girlfriend Sophia's hand, and he began kind of jogging down the main road in the direction of the church. And so Enrique and Anna followed behind. And after only walking maybe 10 or 20 feet, Enrique happened to turn around and look back where they had just been standing next to this dilapidated building. And already he couldn't see that building because this fog had rolled in and totally obscured his view. Enrique couldn't help but that feel sucks. a little uneasy, again, because the fog, he thought the fog the was creepiness. supposed to come in at night, and it's broad daylight, and here we are, totally covered in fog. But he shook it off, thinking, what's the... Bro, I, I live in Ohio, all right? <clears throat> Exciting, I know. We get fog here like midday. It's happened. I've seen it. It's weird. Comes out of the hills. Big deal. And so Enrique turned back around and he and Anna hustled to catch up with Jorge and Sofia, who by this point had stopped a little farther down the road off to the side where there was this strange rectangular rock that was maybe two feet tall, just kind of jutting up out of the ground. And when Enrique and Anna made it to Jorge and Sofia, Jorge placed his hand on the top of this strange rock and looking very satisfied with himself, he would tell his friends, this is the cis stone and people say it contains dark powers. The cis stone was actually one of the oldest things in all of La Musara. Dark Back powers. in the day, Muslim armies used to march through La Musara, which actually got its name from this. La dark Musara powers. means the place to march. And so these armies, as they would pass through La the Musara, making their way to the valley to down below, the they would always stop at the cis stone because they believed it had magical powers that could help them defeat their enemies in their upcoming battles. Now, the Muslim armies were long gone by this point. So, so does it have magical powers? Do some people just believe that the magical powers is either good or bad or whatever the case may be on what they believe? Or is it just a stone that, you know, there's no sword in it. There's no special writing on it. It's just a stone. People put a lot of faith in rocks. I had a pet rock once. Pretty sure I forgot to feed it and it died, but 
point, but the Sistone was still there, and people still said that it contained that kind of magical power, that there were dark forces at work inside of the stone, and so to touch it was very risky. In fact, some people said, if you touch the Sistone, you, you could be sucked into this parallel world oh, full of all these demonic entities. And so as Jorge told sucked. the group about all this history surrounding the Sistone and how no one should touch it, remember... Did, did the stone suck him? Did he get sucked into the... <sighs> There's suckage. Someone got sucked. We don't know who. He's got his hands squarely on the system the whole time. And so when he finishes telling the story, he looks at the others and said, come on, somebody else touch it. Jorge's girlfriend, Sophia, Who else said, wants to get absolutely sucked? not. I'm not about to tempt evil spirits here. But Enrique's wife, Anna, said, you know what? I'll touch it. And so Jorge smiled. He pulled his hand off the cistone. And Anna, she walked. I bet he did smile. <sighs> Forward, she took a deep breath, and then she placed her hand on the stone. And for a second, the whole group just held their breath, like something was going to reach out and grab Anna and pull her into the stone. But nothing happened, and a minute later, Anna had pulled her hand off, and the whole group was laughing. But just a couple of seconds later, Enrique, who had been laughing along with the group, suddenly noticed that the frogs in the pond near the church, a little farther down the road from where they were, were suddenly so much louder. It was almost like when they touched the stone, it had maximized the volume of these frogs. And so Enrique, he turned his whole body and began staring down the road through the mist and frogs. the on switch the for the frogs? And he could kind of barely make it out. You know, he was trying to see if there was something obvious. How do we get that ambient sound? Well, you just gotta go over and get sucked by that stone and you'll hear frogs for days. Causing these frogs to kind of go crazy. But as he stared at this pond, which again, he could barely see, right behind it was the church. But there was lots of fog kind of blocking the church. And for a second, the fog kind of parted and Enrique got a full shot of one of the windows of this abandoned church. And in the window was this dark figure just standing there staring at Enrique and his friends. And Enrique, he sees this thing in the window and in a second his it church, was gone. Is it and Jesus? then the fog rolled back in, covered up the window, and Enrique couldn't see anything anymore. And so no, Enrique just devil. stood there in stunned silence, having no idea if what he just saw had really just happened or if oh, it was yeah. in his imagination or something. Insane. But before he could even try to process what had just happened, he heard his name being called. And so he kind of snapped out of it. Is it a sign? He turned back to the group, and it was Anna, who was now jokingly saying, Come on, Enrique, touch the stone too! Enrique quickly scanned Anna, Sophia, and Jorge's face, and they were all smiling and laughing still, and so clearly none of them had seen this figure in the window. And so Enrique, he kind of just looked at all of his friends, and then he looked back in the direction of the church in this window. Maybe it was just his eyes playing tricks. Because the fog was blocking it out. And so Enrique just tells himself, Well, maybe. Okay. Here's... Here's... Here's, here's my thing. I've been in foggy areas. I've been in some extremely fo foggy areas. Like I've been in a position where like I did not feel comfortable even driving my vehicle. Like I literally pulled into a gas station and just sat there. I was that nervous. I, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. It was awful. But I also know sometimes whenever like there's like a light source somewhere and something walks in front of it, a shadow can come through like the fog. So could that maybe have been like a light from somewhere casting a shadow off of like a tree or a rock or something like that, just giving it that look like there was someone there, like a dark shadowy figure there when it was actually just a dark shadowy shadow. You know what I mean? 
Okay, there's no way that I just saw some dark figure moving around this abandoned church. You know, that must have oh, been my imagination. I'm totally fine. And so he turned back to his friends, and he could tell they were not going to let it go until he touched the stone. Of course and not. so he said, fine, and he walked up, and he touched the stone. And hey, immediately, as soon as his Only friends want their friends to get stone, sucked with them, okay? Everything seemed to change. The air around Enrique got cooler, and the stone itself started to warm up. And as this happened, Enrique, whose hand was still on the stone, began to think, wow, I could do this for hours. I could just stay here and leave my hand on the stone. I mean, this is amazing. But then somewhere buried deep in his mind, Enrique began telling himself, get away from the stone. Take your hand away, get away right now. And so finally, Enrique did yank his hand away, and right away, all those feelings he was having as he touched the stone disappeared. The air went back to normal, he did not feel compelled to touch the stone, and he just kind of was left thinking, what just happened? And so Enrique's wife, Anna, along with Jorge, they were both grinning at Enrique, waiting for him to tell them about what it was like to touch the cyst stone. But behind them, Sophia, Jorge's girlfriend, she was not happy. She was the only one who had not touched the cyst stone. And so she spoke up and said, guys, let's get away from the cyst stone. I don't want to continue to tempt evil spirits, okay? Let's just go. And so Jorge threw his I... arm around Sophia okay. and told her to lighten up and then said, come on, let's do some more exploring. And so Jorge took Sophia his hand and he continued walking down the main road in the direction of the church and Enrique's wife Anna she quickly followed right after them kind of running to keep up like she was a kid who was excited about what they were doing but Enrique he just stayed put for an extra second because even though he had told himself that you know whatever he saw in the window was nothing he could not help the fact that as soon as he touched that cyst stone, he felt different. There was something off about the stone, and really there seemed to be something off about this whole village, which by this point was now completely enveloped in fog. They were totally covered. Now, man, Enrique, creepy, at this man. point, did just want to leave. I'm enjoying it. Musa. I know I got really quiet. He didn't want to be there but... anymore. The place was totally creeping him out. But he didn't want to be a party pooper, and so he turned and continued walking down the main road after his friends and his wife. And after he walked a little ways, the fog parted enough that he could see the pond full of these very loud croaking frogs, as well as the church and that window where he had seen or supposedly seen this dark figure, but the window was empty. And Enrique was relieved to see that his friends clearly had not stopped at the church. They had not tried to go in. They had gone behind the church into the cemetery. Enrique did not want to go inside of the church because even Can't though, again, he had told himself that, you know, that figure wasn't Shadows real, wasn't you. really in the window, still there was a part of him that wanted to stay far away from this building. But after Enrique walked past the pond and began side-skirting the church to get to the cemetery, he just stopped and turned and actually faced the window, kind of like involuntarily. He was looking at the window where this dark figure had been. And again, it's empty. You know, there's nothing there. But Enrique felt like something was pulling him towards this window. And so without saying anything to his friends, who weren't really paying attention to Enrique, they're kind of just walking around the cemetery, Enrique walked right up to this window. He's right in front of it. He's looking inside. And now he can see into the actual church. And it's totally ruined inside. But he can see where the pews used to be on the ground. And he could also see where the pulpit used to be, where the priest would give mass. And as Enrique stood there staring into the church, he kept leaning closer and closer and closer into the church until finally he felt like he really wanted to move away and get away from the church. But it was yeah. like he couldn't. He just kept getting pulled into Sucked. this opening and then as this was happening the sound of the frogs got louder and louder until Enrique sucked. felt like he was totally consumed by these frogs meanwhile just around the corner of the church in back in the cemetery Anna Jorge and Sofia were kind of laughing and walking around the cemetery reading the different headstones when at some point Anna Enrique's wife just happened to look up when she realized Enrique was not there with them and so Anna she walked over to the gate of the cemetery and she looked up up along the side of the church uh -huh. and there was Enrique kind of leaning forward into this window looking into the church and so Anna she yelled out to him a couple of times but Enrique did not even notice her or acknowledge her he just continued leaning forward looking in this window and finally Anna got right up next to Enrique and she actually shook his shoulder and when she did that Enrique kind of snapped out of it and turned and looked at her but didn't say anything he just had this totally confused look on his face and Anna she looks up at her husband and she's like come on come into the cemetery that's where everyone is come on and then Anna turned and skipped towards the cemetery 
And once Anna was back in the cemetery, she just got right back to walking around and looking at all the different headstones. Yeah. At some point, as she was looking at one particular headstone, she took a few steps back to get a better look at it. Uh -oh. and she accidentally was it hers? bumped into oh. another headstone, a big cross that had a line drawn across it, and it fell to the ground and it broke. Jorge and Sophia oh, heard the sound of the stone breaking in half, and they turned and looked at Anna, and they kind of quickly understood what had happened. And Jorge, he just started laughing at her, and he said, oh boy, now you've upset the evil spirits in this town. You better put that back together. Now, Anna was trying to make light of this, but she was totally panicking and did not like the fact that she had just desecrated a gravesite in a no, potentially haunted town. And so she began picking up the headstone and trying to put the stone back on top but it was no use, it was totally broken. And so as Anna continued to fumble totally. with this headstone, and as Jorge continued to laugh and harass her about all the evil spirits that were going to attack her because of what she did, she Humpty Dumpty Jorge's did. girlfriend, Sophia, who was right next to him, she started getting on edge and she said, hey, Jorge, Jorge, is it true that this place is haunted? I mean, really, is this actually is a haunted town? I mean, what's the deal? And Jorge, at this point, he stops laughing at Anna and he turns to Sophia and he goes, yeah, I think this Fuck place yeah, really is haunted. And then he would you tell know. them the story you know what's of haunted, how Brit. La Musara we came hear. to be known as a haunted town. If you're enjoying today's story, well, I have exciting news for you. My long-awaited very first book is out right now. It's called Mr. Ballin Presents Strange, Dark, and Mysterious, The Graphic Stories, and it's shipping worldwide right now. This graphic novel was truly a labor of love, but I can tell you it came out just beautiful, and I think you're going to love it as much as we do. It has four feature How many of you all out there have stories, that? One of which you're listening to right now. I know of at least along one. Along with five OG classic Mr. Ballin stories that have all been reformatted and re-edited to fit this book. If you want to purchase a copy of this bad boy, just go to book.ballinstudios.com, or you can go wherever books or audiobooks are sold. And speaking of audiobooks, if you enjoy hearing me tell you stories, well, guess what? There is an audiobook version of this. And I can tell you, when I recorded said audiobook, I got really into it and kind of, at times, went off script, kind of dramatically so. Uh, and so it winds up being this really cool accompanying piece to the graphic novel, but it's also a really unique standalone Mr. Ballin piece. So it's like a really cool thing to get that is not just a regurgitation of what you read in the book. It's its oh, own yeah. thing. Again, my first book, Mr. Bullen Presents Strange, Dark, and Mysterious, The Graphic Stories, is out right now and shipping worldwide. Go to book.ballenstudios.com or anywhere else worldwide. books are sold to get your Web. copy today. Bum, bum, bum. Holy shit. Back in October of 1873, oh, there was a War. civil okay. war happening in this part of Spain and one of the rival armies was using the caves in the mountainside kind of near La Musara as sort of makeshift field hospitals for their wounded. And okay. one night, a very famous general named Cercos was wounded in battle. Cercos. He was brought into one of these caves and that was where he died. Now, Cercos was a beloved leader and so the people inside of this cave really wanted to give him a proper burial but they knew they had to keep his death a secret because if it got out to the rest of the men that their leader had died, it would be totally Chaos. demoralizing and it would really give their enemies a victory. And so the six people inside of this cave, they built a coffin and placed Cercos inside of it. And then early the next morning, when it was still dark out, these six carried the coffin with Cercos inside of it up into La Musara and they buried him secretly in the cemetery behind the church. Weeks later, five armed rival soldiers climbed up the mountain into La Musara to look for General Cercos. They didn't know that he had died in that battle. In fact, really That's besides those six people that saw him die and secretly buried him, nobody knew he was dead. And so these soldiers actually thought Cercos was hiding out in La Musara. And so these soldiers began busting in to all the civilians' homes uh, in La Musara and ripping them apart, looking for this general. And they'd send the people out into the streets and tell them they're going to kill them unless they give up information about where this general is. And finally, after about an hour of this, an elderly man who lived in La Musara had just had enough. And he stepped forward and he told the rival soldiers that General Cercos was dead, that he was buried in the cemetery behind their church. But the rival soldiers didn't believe the man. They said, okay, show us proof. 
but the elderly man said, well, I don't know exactly where he was buried in the cemetery. I just heard that's where he was buried. And so the soldier said, okay, get everybody over to the cemetery right now. And so all the townspeople made their way over to the cemetery and the soldiers followed them. And then once they were there, the soldiers demanded that the townspeople begin basically digging up all the graves to find Sarah. What the fuck? And as the townspeople began to dig, the sound of the frogs in the nearby pond began so to get up. louder and louder and louder until Can't finally the him. leader of these rival soldiers actually stepped away from all the chaos happening in the cemetery and walked over to the pond and began firing his gun into the water to get the frogs to stop, but they wouldn't. They actually only got louder and louder. And so the leader of these what? rival soldiers it's finally just gives up, up in here. on trying to quiet down these frogs, and he turns around and walks back into the cemetery, and he finds all the townspeople have stopped digging. They've basically dug up every grave, and they haven't found Serkos, and they're just kind of waiting to see what happens next. But the leader, as he looked across this graveyard, he noticed there was one grave that very conspicuously had not been touched. Everything around it had been dug up, but not this. No one had touched that grave. And so the leader said, go, dig that one up. But immediately the townspeople kind of took a step back and acted like, no way, we're not going near that grave. And so finally, a townsperson actually stepped forward and said to the leader of these rival soldiers that that grave contained this old woman who had died recently, who everyone suspected of being a witch. And so it was dangerous to try to dig her up. But the rival soldiers did not care at all about this. They just raised their guns and demanded the townspeople dig that grave up immediately. And so they would. They would Kill come me. over, burn and die by a ghost. Coffin, and then the rival soldiers would pop open the lid. And as soon as it was open, everybody went silent. Because this woman, who had died weeks earlier, looked totally preserved. She was laying on her back, and her skin was very pale, but it had not begun to rot yet. Even her cheeks still had a kind of pinkish hue to them, and her lips were open part way, as if she had been buried mid-sentence. But what really had startled the group into silence was this woman's eyes were wide open when they opened up this coffin. It looked like she oh, was looking creepy. directly at all of them. And so after Killer. a couple of seconds of the Again. silence from zombie. seeing this woman for the first time, the townspeople began to it's cry and scream and back up away from Resident the coffin. Evil. And the rival soldiers, they were startled too by this woman's appearance, but they were more angry than anything else because by finding this woman in this grave, it now meant they, they had not found the general. And so out of frustration, uh, the rival soldiers the grabbed this old woman's body, this witch's body, and they pulled her out of her grave, they strung her up to a tree, and they just sat there shooting at her constantly until her body had basically been obliterated by all the bullets. And then finally, when the soldiers stopped shooting, Why? they realized everything had gone quiet. Just a second earlier, the cacophony of these frogs croaking in the pond that had been so loud, it was like totally overwhelming, had now completely ceased. And it was like the town had gone absolutely still. Dead. And this stillness and quietness Quiet. was so unsettling for these soldiers that they actually just turned and fled right there without saying a word to the townspeople. And then once well, the soldiers I don't blame were them. gone, the townspeople got to work reburying their dead. And at some point, one of the townspeople jumped into the grave. I am so sorry I have the yawns. It's, it's been a very, very long day. And it's going to be a very, very long couple more days. I can't go into detail why. It just is. And I'm very tired. I've had like an hour of sleep. So I do apologize for the constant yawning. It'll get better. It gets it. Everything gets better with time. Of where the witch had been, and when they landed in the dirt at the bottom, their foot actually sunk down an extra foot. They had landed on something hollow and crashed into it. And what it was was another coffin. There was another coffin buried below this woman's that the soldiers had not seen. And this secret coffin belonged to General Serkos. When those oh, six smart. people had secretly buried General Serkos, they had just placed his coffin at the bottom of an open grave that was about to be filled with somebody else's coffin. 
in. They put it in, they covered up his coffin with enough dirt that no one could see it, and then the next day, the townspeople lowered the witch in her coffin into that grave without realizing General Cercos was below it, and then they filled it in, and then they placed a headstone on her grave, but because they thought she was a witch, they decided not to write her name on the headstone. Instead, they just etched a horizontal line across her headstone. And so after this incident with the rival soldiers desecrating this woman's grave and her body, La Musara was never the same. People in the town began Is that the same left and right. Tombstone that the lady broke. Bad, so they couldn't plant any crops. Oh, fuck. And all these insects came through the town. broke this case wide open, bro. plagues of illnesses yeah. and diseases came through. And so it wasn't long before La Musara had developed this reputation of being cursed. And by the 1950s, that curse apparently had driven the last few people out, officially making it a ghost town. After Jorge wrapped up the story, Anna was amazing. just horrified looking straight down at the ground because it would turn out the gravestone that she had accidentally knocked over and broken, well, it had a horizontal okay, line etched across Shh. the middle of it. It was the witch's headstone. That was the one she had broken. And so suddenly feeling totally spooked, Anna was about to yell to Jorge and Sofia that she wants to leave now when she happened to glance over at the base of one of the cemetery walls and she saw the perfect bloody milk cap mushroom, the exact type she knew her husband was looking for. And so Anna walked over, she picked this mushroom and she turned around to show it to Enrique but Enrique was not in the cemetery. And so right away, Anna thought, wait, did my husband ever actually follow me back down Your husband's the getting sucked. after I saw him by the church? She couldn't remember. She thought he followed her, but she wasn't sure. And so no. Anna yelled out for Enrique, but he never called back. And so she turned and looked over at Sofia and Jorge, who she could barely see through the fog. And she asked them, hey, have you seen my husband? Is he, is he in here? Did you see where he went? And they both said, no, we have no idea. And so Anna, who at this point was now really starting to panic because this whole situation in La Musara was getting pretty spooky for her. And so she just dropped the mushroom and took off running out of the cemetery. Now, Sophia and Jorge did not really know what was going on. They didn't understand the urgency that Anna was feeling to find Enrique. And so they saw her take off to go find Enrique and they just kind of casually walked on after her. And when they turned the corner and they exited the cemetery and began walking basically alongside the the church now again the visibility is terrible from all this fog yeah as they moved along they couldn't see anna or enrique but they could hear anna calling out for enrique over and over again and as they moved sophia and jorge they would see these shadows moving around in the fog and they would think it was enrique or anna but as they got up to where these shadows were there'd be nothing there and so sophia she began grabbing tighter and tighter onto jorge's arm and jorge who had been kind of joking about how this place was evil was also now starting to feel a little bit spooked about what was going on and so they began walking a little bit faster and faster in the direction of anna's voice and as sophia and jorge got closer and closer to Anna, the sound of the frogs they all in getting that sucked? pond began to get louder and louder and louder until Jorge and Sofia could barely hear Anna over the sound of these frogs. And then just like that, the frogs stopped. And all Sofia and Jorge could hear was the sound now of Anna crying. Now, Jorge and Sofia could what? not actually see Anna because of the fog, but they walked in the direction of her voice and they ultimately found Anna crouched down with her back to them right in the spot where Enrique had previously been standing staring in that church window. And so Sofia and Jorge, they walked up to Anna and they reached down and they put their hands on her shoulder. And when Anna turned around, she was clutching Enrique's wicker basket oh, containing shit. all of his mushrooms. And with tears coming down Anna's eyes, she would say to her friends, He's gone. Anna, Jorge, and Sofia would spend the next hour searching in vain for Enrique in La Musara. Remember, there's no visibility from the fog, and now it's getting dark, uh, and so it's really hard to conduct a search for someone. He and sucked. so after this hour was up, even though they had no idea where Enrique was or what happened to him, the friends decided that their best and really only move was to leave and go tell authorities. And when they did that, a massive search was launched all around La Musara for the next week. But despite this huge effort, 
nobody ever found any trace of Enrique. He just vanished, leaving behind that wicker That's basket weird. that Hannah had found. And so after this week of searching, the authorities finally called it off and told Anna that, you know, most likely her husband must have wandered off and died somewhere. And at some point, hikers will likely discover his body. But Anna could not accept this conclusion. And so she continued to go back to La Musara to look for Enrique. And in January of 1992, so three months after Enrique had gone missing, Anna, Sofia, and Jorge returned to La Musara to okay. do another one of these additional searches. And during the search, the friends were walking past the church and they passed by that same window where Enrique had been standing looking inside and also where his basket had been found by Anna. And the three friends, as they passed by, they happened to see into to the church and down on the main floor where the pews used to be and where the pulpit used to be there were these six dark figures wearing robes standing in a circle not appearing to be doing anything but just standing there okay and immediately anna actually was really annoyed because she figured this must be a group of ghost hunters that were out here looking for something paranormal because after enrique went missing his story made the news largely because he went missing in a town that's long been regarded as being haunted. And yep. so because of his case, you had all these people coming to La Musara in ghost to town. go find ghosts or find whatever happened to Enrique. And so Anna, who was deeply offended by all these people who were coming out to La Musara to look for ghosts, because for Anna, this is not a game. Her husband really went missing here. So she goes right up to the window to tell these six people in robes off, get the hell out of here and have some respect. But when she went to the window and was about to yell in, one of the robed figures suddenly turned and looked up at Anna. And immediately Anna backed up because this clearly was not chills, some bro. ghost hunter. Because the hooded figure had no face. It was just a dark Same. hole looking back up at Anna. But even though there were no eyes, Anna could tell this thing, this entity, was staring right at her. But before Anna, Sophia, or Jorge could react to what they were seeing inside of this church, from behind them, they suddenly heard this unbelievably loud galloping sound, like all these horses were charging towards them. And at the same time, the sound of the frogs in the nearby pond began to get louder and louder and louder. And so Anna, Sophia, and Jorge turned around to see what was going on, kind of expecting to see- What the fuck is you know, going on? Calvary approaching or something. But there was nothing. What? All they saw was the fog on the road. And so the three friends turned back around to Ghost look back into the church. And now these six hooded the figures. And so suddenly thinking that these figures had left the church and they were coming to get them, the three friends did not wait any longer. They turned and just sprinted out of La Musara. Enrique was never found. His wife, his friends, the authorities, they still have no idea what happened to him. There have also been several other people who have gone missing in La Musara, and they too have never been found. That's crazy. I want to go there. I want to come back. Just a reminder, I won't my go there. very first book, Mr. Bullen Presents Strange, Dark, Mysterious, The Graphic Stories, is out right now and shipping worldwide. You can find it wherever books or audiobooks are sold. This book is truly a brand new experience for anybody who's a fan of The Strange, Dark, and Mysterious. We've never had a book before, so this is a big deal. Uh, it's a collection of nine stories. Some are new, some are old, but they're all awesome. The artwork is incredible. The storytelling is just superb. So if you have not purchased your copy yet, or you haven't bought it for one of your friends yet, come on. Go to book.ballandstudios.com or go to wherever books are sold and get a copy today. Again, that is book.ballandstudios.com or go to wherever books or audiobooks are sold to get your copy of our first book today. Like I said, how many of you out there so got that So that's going to do it. If you're looking for more like strange, dark, and mysterious content, remember we have a whole slew of strange, dark... That you do, bro. You got an army of Mr. Ballin strange, dark, and mysterious content stuff out there, but... <laughs> All right. I really enjoyed today's story, man. That was good. So good. I don't know why I did it like that. It was a good video. I enjoyed it. If you all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please go down there, leave a thumbs up. It really does help the channel grow. While you're down there, if you want, go on over and slap that subscribe button. Become part of the B5 Nation. We do some crazy stuff. And if you want to know when that crazy stuff happens, ding that bell. It might work for you. It might not. 
But if it do, if it do, jump in on one of my premieres, get over in the live chat and be like, hey, Bill, you know something? It's been a while since you've done one like this. Why'd you stop? And I'm going back because sometimes I just run out of things to say. Believe it or not. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, Mr. Bone. That was creepy as fuck, Brit.